Welcome one and all. Today we are going to discuss about scapular lunar instability, a book of case series. Uh, I am Dr. Chandra. I am the author, MS Ortho First Year PG. Uh, author 2, Dr. Pagadala Vivek, MS Ortho First Year PG. Author 3, Dr. Kabika Valavan, MS Ortho First Year PG. My guide is Dr. Uh, Professor K. Kadachalam, Department of Orthopedics in Trichy Saramadi College and Research Center, Erangalu, Trichy. We are from Tamil Nadu. Scapulonate dissociation is the most common form of wrist instability, depend as the loss of synchronous motion or normal alignment between the scaphoid and lunate. The mechanism of injury is typically to fall, fall with the wrist extended and ulnar deviation. The reported symptoms include swelling, dorsal tenderness and decreased grip strength with reduced range of movements. Uh, patients who are underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed or untreated may suffer from chronic wrist dysfunction which may result in loss of time at work and interference with activities of daily living. Uh, here are some abbreviations we are going to discuss about. Uh, scaffold unit stabilization. Uh, it is a, uh, from the left side it is a 3D graphic reference presentation of the scaffold unit introduces ligament with scaffold. Remove demonstrate uh, dorsal ligament in the red uh, central fibrocotylage membrane in the yellow and the volar ligament in the blue. The scaffold unit me mechanism of injury. The mechanism of injury for tearing the scaffold unit ligament is a fall uh, onto outstretched hand with wrist extended and in ulnar deviation. The scaffold closely tethered to distal corpal row via intrinsic ligament, a red ligament, and the lunate tethered to radius via extrinsic ligament. Via it is in blue and a progressive torque in the SLI ligament and the top images resulting in tearing from the polar SLI ligament bottom left uh, to the central fibrocotylage membrane bottom middle and finally to the dorsal SLI ligament from the bottom right. In the scaffold unit mechanism of injury uh, here the left side is showing the 3D representation of the volar ligaments of the wrist highlighting the radial lunate yellow. Uh, Radio scapho capitic ORC and the scapho scapho trapezio trapezoid STD ligaments, which contribute secondary to scapholunate instability. From the left, showing the 3D graphic representation highlighting the dorsal intercorporeal TAC and the dorsal radiocorporeal ligaments, which contribute the secondary scapholunate instability. The scapholunate instability we are going to discuss as a case illustrations. Uh, stage one, which is the pre dynamic scapholunate instability. Fat suppressed to proton density weighted axial and coronal images showing attenuation in the volar SLI ligament, in, which is shown in the arrow uh, with intact se um, central fibrocotylaginous membrane, intact dorsal SLI ligament, and uh, normal scaffold unit in dorsal space. Case illustration 2 shows uh, dynamic scaffold unit instability, which is shown in the fat suppressed to T2 weighted axial image, demonstrate the partial tear of the polar SLI ligament. Uh, which is shown in the arrow and the attenuation and the altered signal in the dorsal SLI ligament, which is shown in arrowhead, uh, which uh, under altered signal in scaffold. The fat suppressed proton density weighted coronal image and T2 weighted sagittal image demonstrate the normal scaffold lunate in process space and the normal alignment of radial lunate with capitate and radius. From the left, uh, the scaffold lunate dissociation, which is the stage 3, the post contrast T1 weighted fat suppressed. Axial orthogram image shows the tear in polar SLI ligament, which is shown in the arrow, and the tear in dor dorsal <coughs> scaphal unit injury ligament, which is shown in the arrowhead, and the attenuation of a DAC ligament, in, which is shown in the asterisk. The coronal and sagittal post contrast T1 weighted fat suppressed by orthogram images show widening of the scaphal unit in process space and an intact DCSS, <coughs> which is shown in the arrow. Case illustration 4. Uh, DSI fat suppressed T2 weighted image, actual image shows the complete tears of polar SLI ligament and central fibrocotylaginous membrane dorsal SLI ligament and the scaphoid attachment of DAC ligaments. The fat suppressed T2 weighted image is shown in coronal image of widened scaphoid unit introspect, which is shown in asterisk. The T2 weighted sagittal image shows the torn DRC ligament, uh, which is shown in the arrow. And the dorsal tilting of lunate, which is present. Case illustration 5. Stage 4. It is also the DASI post contrast 
Pad suppressed with T1 weighted orthogram axial and coronal images shows complete tear of the SLI ligament widening of the scaphalunate in process space. Post contrast fat suppressed with T1 weighted sagittal vibe orthogram image shows an intact thickened DCSS suggesting prior injury, which is shown in the arrow. Case illustration 5, which is a stage 5, which is a slack wrist, which is shown in a T1 weighted coronal and sagittal images of MRI, widened the scaphalunate in process space, which has seen with the proximal migration of capitate, uh, narrowing radio scaphoid, which is shown in the arrow, uh, dorsal tilting with the lunate with the degenerative changes are seen. Uh, we are going to discuss about the orthoscopic classification which is uh, done by Gersler uh, which is uh, further divided into four grades. Grade 1 characterized by attenuation of SLA ligament with, without mid-corporal malalignment. Grade 2 which is characterized by slight gap in scaphoid and lunate with corporal malalignment and attenuation of uh, SLA ligament. Grade 3 there is an incongruence between corporal alignment with the large laid uh, scaphoid lunate interosseous gap. Grade 4, which is defined as a incongruence of a corporal alignment with gross instability with at least 2.7 mm gap between the scaphoid and the lunate. An orthoscopic uh, observation that is termed as drive through sign, which is seen in uh, grade 4. Orthoscopic classification, uh, which is on other, other orthoscopic classification named as uh, Messina Evas classification. Here it is further divided into stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and stage 5 where the stage 3 is subdivided into stage 3 A, B and C. Stages of uh, scaphalunate instability uh, for stage 1 which is pre-dynamic, stage 2 which is dynamic, stage 3 which is scaphalunate dissociation, stage 4 which is DASI, stage 5 which is lag. Here we came to the treatment. In the setting of occult instability, the treatment is conservative with uh, casting, medication and uh, physical therapy. Sometimes orthoscopic debridement can be used. Thermal shrinkage have also been used in the setting of attenuated SLA ligament. Treatment for stage 2 dynamic instability and stage 3 scaphalunate dissociation is directed at sagittal and coronal plane alignment abnormalities. The sagittal plane abnormalities are related to abnormal rotation with scaphoid and the best addressed with uh, dorsal capsular disease. The coronal plane injury which is related to tearing of the SLA ligament is best addressed with repair and reconstruction of the ligament. In setting of non-repairable SLA ligament, a bone ligament, bone graft, ligament of plasty and scaphalunate pseudoarthrosis with intercorporal fusion can be performed. In, sub in subacute and chronic cases of SLA ligament injury, scaphalunate fixation using KOS and screws can be used. Uh, for the further treatment in stages of uh, stage 4 DASA, the goal of surgery for symptomatic relief and prevention of progression to slack wrist. The procedures are tailored to restore the corporal alignment and stabilize the scaphoid, which is achieved primarily through intercorporal arthro disease, including scaphoid trapezoid, trapezoid arthros, arthro disease and arthro disease of scaphoid, capitate and lunate. The downside to this procedure is reduced range of movements in the dot thrower plane which is uh, important in the activities of daily living. Once the development of slack ribs, the procedure which is mostly salvage type include four corner ortho disease and for proximal row corpectomy. Once extensive degenerative changes have been developed, surgical options include the total wrist ortho disease and total wrist orthoplasty or a wrist hemiorthroplasty can be performed. The later procedure is reserved for younger individuals which uh, requires higher activity demands. Conclusion uh, It is clear that scaffold lunate instability is a complicated subject. Based on the prior investigation, it is evident in addition to SLA ligament injury, there must be also injury at least one or secondary stabilizer before static malalignment occurs. The secondary stabilizers include numerous instruments and extrinsic ligament uh, of the wrist. The DCSS and the surrounding muscles on tendons. The more investigation is required to fully understand the structure contribution to scaphalunate instability as well as instability. The early and accurate imaging staging leads to optimal treatment, thus improving the symptoms long term outcomes. Here are my references.